come to, to all of us. Uh, how to say, I think that uh, the Ambiguous Adventure is a book a lot of us, we, we know it and we love it because we met it very a long time uh, for those who are so, how to say, old as, <laughs> as me. And um, it's from Sheikh Hamid Dukan. Today we have this pleasure to, to have a presentation from uh, Dr. Karage Jean-Pierre. Uh, what I wanted to say before is that Jean-Pierre, he decided there is 10 years, is two, in 2014, to go from United States to Dakar to, met, uh, to meet uh, Sheikh Hamid Dukan for this book. So it's a great day today. And as I told to Dr. Jim, we change a bit the configuration because it's a fiction. And uh, they allowed us, uh, Dr. Jim allowed us uh, to, to present it. It's, and uh, it's why we changed also uh, so that we could be in such a grain. It's to say the circle where uh, the words are also uh, circulating. So I let the word to Jean-Pierre Caragay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kutsi, Dr. Kutsi Lamko. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you so much for being here. Uh, mostly, thank you so much for thinking to have this idea of a book uh, talk here and uh, to give us uh, that uh, possibility of uh, exchanging on different uh, topics, mostly, and I think all of them somehow, they are linked to what you are doing here and mostly on this issue of uh, education. I would like to thank you so much. Uh, not for being here because I was intimidated when I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I would like to take, a, <laughs> I would like also take this opportunity uh, uh, to thank the Office of Institutional Learning and the Knowledge Management, led by Dr. Jim uh, Ochiti, for this opportunity to read the novel. Uh, in the context, trying to think, especially when we'll be having discussion in the context of uh, uh, balance and inclusive education. So that's, uh, I would try like to see how we can understand it in today's context. Uh, and I think it's very important, uh, even in reading a novel that was uh, published in 1961, uh, and I think if you can read it today and they try to understand actuality, what you are going through today, uh, and I think one of the reasons is because it's a novel. Uh, and to quote Stendhal, uh, who was a French uh, writer, he said, I quote, uh, a novel is a mirror uh, carried along a, uh, a main road. A novel is a kind of palimpsest. So, which means when uh, the first reality or the context that inspire it, once invisible or disappeared, it leaves room for a new environment, new meaning that interrogate new realities, for example, of the 21st century that is possible with the novels, I believe. And that's why in any speech made by His Excellency, always he was quote a poet or a novel fiction. So they're also very important. They help us to think or rethink some reality. So they are not far from our realities, but they open up more for different places. So thank you, Dr. Jim Ochiti. Uh, I'm also grateful to Rosalind Adema Kasenwa uh, from Knowledge uh, Management Coordinator who has been constantly helping prepare this and the entire book series. So, Nashukuru Sana Asante. Yeah. And whatever artistic value my presentation may have today, because it will be different setting and they will be presenting, so it's not really a kind of uh, a lecture I'll be giving. And the why, why is not going to be a lecture? For several reasons. One, I don't have that competence to talk to people using a lecture. I'm just joking. And the second reason is uh, uh, I discuss with Dr. Kulsi Lamko and to say we are not going to have like some people here presenting and then we have an audience. It will be just a dialogue. 
other way why we are talking about education, why we are talking about failure, if we don't understand of that concept of how we present a thing, where we proceed, our methodologies, yeah. So that is also very important. Uh, so, and I would say like, if we have this kind of artistic presentation anyway, it's not my fault. Uh, Dr. Kulsilamko is to blame for that. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Kulsilamko. La cause, merci beaucoup for this. Uh, and finally, I would like to express my gratitude to everyone for coming. Uh, for different departments, thank you so much. And my colleague from RIF who are here. So thank you for your presence and for your support. So as I said from the beginning, today, uh, today's discussion, we focus on this uh, novel written by uh, Sheikh Amidou Kane in dialogue with the way we understand education or we want education to be today. And of course, I'll be more thinking about African realities, but of course, as we know, also related to other countries of the global south. So, uh, but I will not mention most of those countries, uh, just because it's mostly in that experience, but that is shared with other countries in one way. And uh, so the first point concerns, of course, the ambiguity of the subject and the object, trying to see how one of the main character of, uh, in this book, who is called the Samba Diallo. Of course, you have different major characters, uh, the students, so we try to see how is he struggling to understand even the community, so to understand like his identity, but also the community, the identity of the community, the identity of uh, uh, Samba Diallo as an African student, also rethinking about education. Uh, and of course, the second point also, which result from the first, concern the, cho the choice of an educational system in the countries, I would say, of Africa, and of course, by extension, of the global south. Uh, those countries that are still marked by colonial uh, experience and the new colonial, and especially trying to rethink education system when we are still using what uh, Valentin Mudimbe, who is a philosopher from Congo, Kinshasa, called uh, colonial library. That is a steam act. And I think in some of the examples of his excellence, it's a very interesting talking like for someone who's here, say, okay, I'm going to London to learn African studies, you know, to have a degree in African studies. All those kind of questions, they participate in, uh, the, in the colonial library. Even books we use, our references, and that's how also the Global South, I think, working on that is very important. And I would like to start should I say I'd like to start? Let me just continue. Uh, but to go through two anecdotes, that's very interesting. So at the Gregorian University in Rome, uh, a professor of philosophy of language was teaching in Italian. International students were taking notes in their local languages. And some were even using their own writing systems. A surprised Japanese student turned to his African classmate who was taking his notes in French. And he asked him, so, in Africa, do you have no language? A second case, this is my own experience. I went to the United States to do first uh, my, my, my master degrees in social ethics. A social ethics is equivalent of moral philosophy, moral theology, just trying to combine. And the immigration officer, looking at my, uh, my I-20, I-20, like a visa for student, and they asked me this question. Do you think San Francisco is the best place for social ethics? And at that time, in the United States, San Francisco, Chicago, and Boston, had three major schools where they have a philosophy and theology. And they probably the officer knew the differences in approach among the three schools. It was said that if you want to do ethics with your body, you must go to San Francisco. If you want to do it with your brain, you have to go to Boston. And if you want to do it with your heart, you have to go to Chicago. 
I think the two anecdotes uh, arise several challenging questions for an African student who I was going there, or a researcher educated in a Western knowledge system. And among them, some of the question, is it possible to learn, think, and write Africa from a language which is not African? Second, which discipline or content is relevant for Africa? And the third, which method should be used to address African issues? And the fourth, thinking about education system, in a specific case of Africa, do we have to choose between tradition and modernity, religion, secularism, individual and community, local and the global? And I think in this book, we have those kind of questions that was raised already in 61, a book that is considered as a philosophical book, of course, it's a literary book, but raising, raising different questions. A book we can read from different point of view. For some people, for example, when we are looking for some critics of the book, they will may concentrate on the issue of religion, for example. Others, and what I'll try to do, is like to see from educational issues. And I think most of the people, they will see, like, for example, identity. But whatever topics you see is through going, using education as a main point, going. And from that education, you can have other points that have been raised uh, in the book. But of course, this novel uh, is, a, is a kind of autobiographical novel. Uh, but of course, the narrator is not the first person, mostly is the third person that is narrating the story, but very close to the story of the author. But of course, in, since it's a novel, we may say the author is not there, the death of the author, so it's not concerned, but of course, it's from that experience. So uh, then some of the, in reading, I said this is autobiographical, a novel, a book or novel, is chronicle the cultural and the spiritual conflict experience by a young character, that is a Samba Diallo, the son of the knight Diallo Bey, who is given over to a strict Quranic master at the age of seven to ensure his spiritual education. So he was studying, having this type of education when he was seven. Uh, had given it to a teacher, a master, uh, a spiritual leader. His name was a Tierno. Uh, and the great writer, his aunt, formed the idea of convincing his brother to remove uh, uh, his son from the Quranic school and send him to the new school, the Western, the Western school. So mostly, so the novel was written in the, I mean, the, was a, the setting of the novel. It was in the time, it was during thinking about the moment of a colonial period where you have now schools like New what they call the new education, new education system or new school, let's say, like that. And that's representing Western school, mostly French school. And they're thinking, should we send our kids in those kind of a new school? So that was the most debate. The old book is also going through that. Uh, and the Samba, so that is happened. So this book, as I said, I think that is the main question, is a book that is divided into two parts, as uh, for those who had a chance to go through it and read it. Uh, and the first part has nine chapters, and the setting, the book is, is happening in Senegal. I mean, let's say Senegal, but the country, they say like the country of Odialobe. And the second part of the book uh, also has nine chapters and is the moment Samba Diallo went to France to have that education, uh, uh, French education. But that is started all, all within the first and one chapter of the first part. So in the first part, there was also a, the last chapter is a 10. So the chapter 10 is a kind of addition no, to that. You can see like it's not the same story. It's a kind of a dream, it's a kind of representing because it happened when Samba Diallo was, uh, was no longer there, and he was killed in chapter nine. So for the first nine chapters, and, and in this book you have a different characters, but main characters, we have, uh, as I say, Samba Diallo, you have a, a Tierno, who's uh, uh, the, the, in the, the, the book, they call him teacher. And then you have also 
uh, somebody else's father, and it was also very important. Also, the brother of uh, the the chief was uh, the brother of uh, the uh, uh, royal lady. Uh, it was also very very important in the book. So, uh, in this first uh, first nine chapters, we have that moment. They are trying. To, they are discussing, trying to see where should we send our child? Should we send in this new school? And this idea most is developed by the royal lady. That is to see, whatever happened, we have to embrace it. And she said that, for example, in novel, of course, I don't like this is cool in the context, but I feel like kind of pragmatism we have to send. But other people, other characters, there's a kind of resistance. And anyway, they are going through a dialogue in a village. They sit, they will discuss. So you have a lot of discussion going on. And of course, at the end, he will be sent to that school, like a modern school, called modern school, uh, through this influence or presentation by the uh, royal lady. And the second part, now Samba Diallo, is uh, in France. So the old chapters, except in uh, eight and the nine chapters, when we go back to Senegal, his father will write him a letter asking him to go back and especially to replace, like uh, to succeed to Maitre Tierno. So which means to be also a teacher, but a spiritual also leader in the village. So, and when he came back, he was a kind of a man who has been transformed. So, Samba Diallo, in the very first part, is still, I mean, he's still a kid, receiving education, uh, like I would say, for both parts. So when he went to France for education, then it became like, it was like a kind of changement. He's now, he went there to study philosophy, and they have a, people who have a different ideas who are not linked to the idea of God, for example, uh, religion, yeah. Uh, there was a kind of secularism, so, and then he was also affected by that, that's a story. So he came back, uh, and then sometimes he resist even to go to pray. So, and uh, he didn't want to succeed to Maitre Tierno. And another character called uh, the fall will kill him. So, kind of symbolic. Or just, there was just one word at the end of uh, chapter nine, just talking about uh, his death. So, uh, so this novel, they develop also different uh, themes that uh, seem very, very important. And all those themes, they are linked and they have this idea of ambiguity. And then, and the most is like, should we choose and what? And in the novel, there is a sentence that is coming almost in each chapter and they said also by different characters. Like for example, what we lose, uh, like is uh, less important than what we are going to embrace as a new values or new culture. So they are having this kind of debate and the different characters are coming through that. So, but Samba Diallo in France then, so this, the major topics, and they'll come to Samba Diallo, the major topics you have is this about ambiguity. So should we choose between tradition and the modernity? Should we choose between uh, religion and the secularism? Uh, so they have that, so. But at the end now, Samba Diallo is also uh, facing new challenges, and uh, one of them is uh, kind of he as an individual, and who he is thinking about that his own identity. So it becomes, and that's how this novel is also considered as existentialist, existentialist novel. But now it's about himself now, thinking about his place in the society. It's not just about uh, the community. So, and at the end, and the most important, I think that's how we can engage in our discussion, just like going through those different themes, even this, should we, what kind of system should we choose? And I think that was also the debate that was continued about this novel. And having him killed, like death, has been also interpreted in different ways, yeah. Some, they consider the idea of death as a kind of, uh, uh, limitation, like this difficulty, for example, to really choose, yeah, to succeed, to make a kind of symbiosis about the different systems. And uh, it's not just uh, uh, Amidukane, we have also in different novels, some characters at the end, we have this idea of death. Uh, 
But also another aspect is especially from chapter one continuing like using this, uh, especially the aspect of religion, death also is considered as a kind of transition. So like uh, where you have all the things, whatever they were thinking that they have to die, so you have a new idea like uh, to reborn or born again. So, and for example, Metetiel no, is talking also about death. And so that is also, you have uh, the two aspects. So which system, how can we have, uh, which system should we choose? They said, we have also never novels of Africans, not only in terms of we are using our system, what kind of system education we need in our context, but it goes even further, what kind of research we are doing, being educated and what we do. And you have the same crisis of Samba Diallo that exists now, even scholars who have done different studies. For example, Mudimba, I mentioned in the beginning, between tight, is talking about his own experience. I mean, the characters went also to Europe, he did the studies, came back to Africa, but he can't do anything. He realized that is not useful for his society. So, and he's not the only one. You have a different uh, uh, Ngal, for example, with his novel, Gian Battista Vico, or The Rape of Africa, same questions. So. Uh, what kind of research, how can we connect like, to our context, our reality? And it has become also this kind of uh, questions they have raising. So uh, Dr. Kulsilam said, yeah, is not about a lecture, just give the context and the people will read the novel, then we can have some questions. So we have uh, a dialogue in the novel, uh, especially the end of the first uh, part of the book, where uh, the great lady is discussing, is in dialogue with uh, Chief, his brother, but a, a brother, I'm sorry, at the end, but mostly with the Tierno, who is a chief, about the choice they have to make. So that is maybe I would like just to have uh, that part, yeah. Mm -hmm. Prayer of a Black Poem, a poem by Gitti Rolian. Lord, I am so tired, tired to enter this world. Far have I wandered since the cup crew, and the road is cold as steep. Lord, I do not want to go into the old school. Please help me that I need not go again. I want to follow Father into the cool goddess, when the night is hovering over the magic forest. When spirits play before the dawn, barefoot, I want to tread the red hot paths that bowl in midday sun, and then lie down to sleep beneath a manga tree. And I want to wake up only when down there the white man saw instead to hold, and the factory, a sheep on the sugar fields, lands and spits as crew of black workers into the landscape. Lord, I do not want to go into the old school. Please help me that I need not go again. It's true to say a little negro at the go so that he might become just like the gentleman of the city. So that he might become a real gentleman. But I do not want to become a gentleman of the city or as they call it, a real young man. I'd rather stroll along the sugar stores where the tight stacks are piled with brown sugar, brown like my skin. I'd rather listen when the moon is whispering tenderly into the ear of the cocoa palms. To that, the old man who always smokes recites with breaking voice during the night the stories of Samba and Master Hare and many others more that are not found in any book. Lord, the Negroes have had too much work already. Why should we learn again from foreign books about all kind of things we've never seen? And then their school is far too sad, just as sad as these young men of the city. These real young men who do not even know how to dance by the light of the moon who do not even know how to walk on the flesh of their feet, who do not even know how to tell the tales of their fathers 
Oh Lord, I do not want to go into the art schools again. Thank you so much to Ellen, to Hello and Nathan to be with us. Thank you also to to Mike to give us his voice and uh, and to the one who is not here. I think that is uh, uh, Dr. Simon. Huh? He, he, he is not here. So um, it's, it's to 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 this prayer is uh, where is Jean Pierre? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this prayer is, is uh, to introduce all, all we will be uh, uh, talking about. Even we had already uh, this uh, big uh, show from uh, Jean Pierre. Uh, I want to ask you uh, before uh, coming to the dialogue uh, why the prayer of a black little child in the beginning of this presentation and uh, why Gitti Rolien, because it's a, a poem from Gitti Rolien, well known also uh, by a lot of uh, people. Yeah, uh, this poem, I mean, is very important because for me it represents somehow, I mean, not the opposite. In the beginning, I mean, in the novel, yeah, people we have the community thinking about the education of a child. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody else, what kind of education? Where should it go? But in this case, very interesting, we have also uh, uh, Guy Tyrolien, just for example, you said like a, a child, but in a different way, it's just a child complaining about type of education. Why am I having this? Why those kind of education? Why I'm reading this book? So, in that way, I wanted just to have uh, not a different perspective, but the same topic, but where we have also a child now interrogating, try to understand why he's going through, or why he or she's going through. And this is possible, of course, in the Global South kids. Uh, they are not, we can just consider them as innocent. When they are going through that, they have also questions that they are raising. Mm -hmm. So, and for me it was important, not just like uh, where we have uh, adult thinking about the type of education, but children, they are also involved in those kind of questions. And I think it's not just a Gitterolian, even, for example, the Ongontra Damas with a black mask, you have that, yeah, why am I having this kind of tools? Why this, you have also a child complaining about that. Mm -hmm. Even also, MSZ have also that topic. So yeah. mm -hmm. for me, it was also important to have a child uh, thinking about his own type of education or his own type of education. Mm -hmm. I, I think in my case I was very innocent mm -hmm. uh, on that time. Mm -hmm. uh, we were uh, little kids uh, mm -hmm. and uh, our parents, they woke up very early mm -hmm. at dawn, at four o'clock, mm -hmm. and uh, the gourd of millet and milk porridge was already prepared. They were also roasted peanuts and we were a group of about 10 children from the village i was only a seven year old imagine a seven year old kid working seven seven kilometers to go to school by foot and uh, we began very early and we walked and uh, by the time we had to go back it's also seven kilometers. And uh, we, we were not afraid because we were very innocent, as you are saying, because we wanted to go to this school of uh, the, 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 the white people. And uh, we sang to give ourselves courage when we were coming back in the night. And uh, Sometimes also we met out of our, but sometimes when you can see the INS, they, they were following us, yeah. not attacking us. I think that on that time, and they can't come with us till uh, to see the roofs of the village and after they, they go back. So to say that in that time, the nature was really with, <laughs> with us in protecting us. And uh, this is to say that uh, maybe there is this prayer and how how uh, how to 
to respect also uh, what is uh, the thought of people. Uh, because the, when, when you can have some students that are not coming for the, for the school, and the teacher, uh, he had to ask them, but it's, it's for the kid, uh, his duty is to go and to... So this, this, there, there was some uh, contract with the villages in the, in, in the teachers. It's only to, to comment also your, your video. Now, uh, maybe we will come back to the dialogue if you... Yes, yeah, maybe because it's part of uh, the book, mm -hmm. if we can have uh, that mm -hmm. dialogue, that should be. Okay. So, I Mary. Guess, uh, let us come to see Anna. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, that is the extract from Sabuk. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I am delighted to find you here, Master. Perhaps we are going to bring matters into focus this evening. I do not see how. Yes, indeed, Master. My brother is the living heart of this country. But you are its conscience. Envelop yourself in shadow. Retire your, into your own heart and nothing, I declare to you, nothing will bring good fortune to the people of the Alube. Your house is the most scantily furnished in the countryside. Your body Close the sublime lines of his envoy with our prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. The last messenger has transmitted to us the ultimate word in which everything has been said. Only the incessant expect anything further, and along with them, the famished, the sick, and the enslaved. My brother. You river. He took his gun, followed by the elite of the region. He flung himself upon the newcomers. His heart was interpreted. And to him, the value of liberty was greater than the value of life. Our father and the elite of the country with him was defeated. Why? How? Only the newcomers knew. We must ask them. We must go to learn from them the art of conquering without being in the right. Furthermore, the conflict has not yet ceased. The foreign school is the new form of war, which those of us who, have, who are here are waging, and we must send our elite there, expecting that all the country will follow them. It is well that once more, the elite should lead the way. If there is risk, they are the best prepared to cope. It is well said, and once more that the elite should lead the way. If there, is a, if there is good to be drawn from it, they should also be the first to acquire that. This is what I wish to say, my brother, unless we begin by sending our own. Then in my heart, I have preference. It is so, oh my God, forgive me. I shall give back to you as soon as you express that wish. I salute you. I have done something that is not pleasing to us and which is not in accordance to our customs. I have invited the women to this meeting today. And we, the Alobe, hate that. And rightly, for we think women should remain at home. But more and more, we shall have to do the things that we hate and things that are not in accordance to our customs. It is for this reason that I come to you today to say this, that I, the most royal lady, I do not like the foreign school. I detest it. My opinion, nevertheless, is that we send our children there. Let me tell you this, neither my brother, your chief, 
or the teacher of the Dialobe has yet to take a stand on this. They are seeking the truth. They are right. But as for me, I am like your baby, Kumba. He's learning to walk. He does not know which way to go. All he knows is that he takes his first foot and puts it in front, and then he takes his second foot and puts it in front of the other. The school which I shall place our children in will perhaps kill in them that which we love and have rightly protected. Perhaps we may even die, the memory of us may die in their hearts. As they come back from school, some of them may not recognize us. What I propose today, however, is that we allow ourselves to die in the hearts of our children and let the foreigners that have defeated us replace the space which wholly we shall have left free. Ardo Dialobe, you said this to me yesterday. Speech may be suspended, but life is not suspended. And that is in fact right. Look at Kumba baby. People of the Alobe, remember this. When the rainy season is coming, we love our fields very much. But what do we do? We plow them, we burn them up, we kill them. As for the seeds in our reserves, what do we do after the rain has fallen? We bury them in the ground. In the same way, recall this. What do we do with our reserve of seeds? We would like to eat them, but instead we bury them in the ground. Folk of the Dialobe, with the arrival of the foreigners, has come the tornado that announces the great hibernation of our people. My opinion, my opinion, my opinion great Dialobe, great is, that I, is that I, the royal lady, the royal lady, the royal I believe, I believe that, our best that our best seeds, our dearest our fields, our dearest fields are, our children. are our children. Does anyone wish Does anyone to speak? Wish to speak? Anyone? 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 In that case, in that case, in that I say this. I say this. Peace be upon you. Be upon you. Great people Great of the Alobi. Of the Alobi. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I think that we are part of the uh, people of the dialogue. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I don't know if we have uh, five minutes before Jean-Pierre. Yeah. I was thinking like maybe, as I said, I mean, if His Excellency has, uh, has still have time to be here, I don't okay. think like five minutes people can take a coffee and then we continue now questions, conversation. Or people want so, to, to be taking the coffee but they can in, in, it is, yeah. meanwhile. Mm -hmm. I, I am not here. <laughs> 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 okay. If the SJ were to be here, yeah. this would be the moment for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. After coffee, just to make it, you know, part of the coffee. Okay. And then, but just let's hope he's here. Okay. He's not. Yeah. So, so, he said. Okay. No, I'm here to observe. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> the way you yeah. want to. Okay. 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 So, I think it, we, we have a coffee or? Yeah, uh, yeah. can take five okay. minutes and then. Let's continue, continue and people can have go and yes. have a coffee also in yes, the same yeah. time. We can bring okay. it so, here, yes. The uh, second one is the concept of identity. It's certainly multifaceted, involving religion in this case. I had the impression that the debate about the education system is between the Quranic school in this book and the Western school. It is as uh, if the African must choose between Islam and uh, the West uh, way of thinking. 
I expected the issue of African traditions to be addressed also, but it's uh, to exchange and uh, I want to hear you about mm -hmm. the theme of identity, religion, and uh, the choose. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think the first question has two parts. One is about literature, like identity in literature, and the second in if literature and the other disciplines, I mean identity and the other disciplines, and the second is about uh, uh, I mean, Islam and uh, I mean, is part of African culture and the Western. So let's start with the first one. Yes, of course, literature has been, uh, that, uh, the, the topic of identity has been very, very important. Uh, I'm thinking mostly, uh, I mean, talking about in Africa, because uh, when African writers starting, sorry for the tautology writing, like uh, it was, I mean, writing like in foreign languages, but literature, of course, did exist. And when you're talking about Africa, Africa is a multi, for example. Other places, like, for example, Ethiopia is part of Africa, but it didn't have uh, that issue, like, to say, like, literature will start with French or English. So, uh, and Kenya, they had also literature in Swahili uh, before being in touch with Western countries, but they were using Arabic characters. So you have, uh, like, a novel of the 15th, 16th centuries. So, uh, but when Africa entered in touch with Africa, with this, when Europe, especially with this idea of a civilization coming, uh, civilized people, uh, and then it was a moment where there was a kind of tabula rasa. It's like, okay, we are going in the places, they don't have a culture, we are discovering them, whatever. So, and then when people started writing, then they started also questioning the type of education they had, the type of life, and they have to prove, have to show that, oh, you know, we have our culture, we have our history, we have that. So that's why the most first novels were just using, talking about African cultures for countries that were colonized mostly. So they have kind of to prove, yes, we have a culture, to respond to the critique. But of course, this idea of identity has always been present. And one was later, so that was like around the 60s when we have this novel. And after, the, after the independence, now the question of writing, for example, in foreign language. Let's say, is it this African literature or is this uh, uh, French literature in Africa? All those kind of questions. The others will say, yes, is African literature in English? Is it African literature in, in, uh, in French? So that was also the issue of identity. And then you have also writers living in Europe, writing from Europe, from, and sometimes from the point of view of Europe. Should we consider them? I mean, that is what kind of identity kind of so even the type of literature was also a question so not only uh, the topics that we, that we discussed about Africa and the Western but also even the text itself try to find the identity so uh, and I think it's still a kind of debate somehow yeah there are some people who believe that we should not call it like African it is a sum you know but also is a context of writing in different languages so uh, Kateb, for example, I uh, was saying like writing in French for me is normal because I consider that as a fruit of the war, so it's mine, I can use. Also, Nila Boutansi will say I was colonized by French, and uh, now it's my turn to colonize French to write in different way. And uh, that's how I think Soled is independence by Kuruma, when you look like the way of writing is like recreating a language using his own term. So, but the most debate, because you are mentioning about uh, other disciplines, that was also the same issues. Like when people saying, "Let's can we have, for example, African philosophy?" And because writing was a kind of a criteria, most important criteria to define, like uh, disciplines. Say, if something that is not like uh, in theology, there was a this kind of debate. So, in other disciplines, so they are, and one of the reasons was like we want like a written text. In the case of Africa, or not a community. So and then you can see that it's still important for us when we're talking about indigenous knowledge or community knowledge, whatever. Yeah. So, but of course that was a debate around the 60s. People are no longer having that debate. And I think the most important debate is like what we are writing and how from where. And what I mentioned from the beginning, the colonial library. Uh, Ebusi Bulaga was, uh, I mean, as a Cameroonian philosopher, thinking about uh, 
disciplines uh, in social sciences and the humanities and uh, fighting, I mean fighting in a way of trying to find his own voice. But at the end he was saying, why should I think about apartheid in South Africa in bringing Hegel on the other authors, whatever. Because that is our way of thinking, just we have one way, that is kind of, so he's questioning, and you're saying maybe I didn't succeed in my own work. So I think in disciplines, yes, a lot of they have also this kind of identity. But now, with this idea of a global, where we can have a global local, it becomes also different because people are making choices when we are talking about, so talking about endogenous, indigenous, so we can get something from outside or transculturality, interculturality, all that. But it's the moment when you make that choice, it's not just imposed, it's not just a moment they said you have no culture in the But right. maybe it's the same. Uh, so from Senegal. And they created uh, with other authors this. Uh, uh, the negritude, like the fact of being Negro, whatever. And then, but it's the same guy who supporting the idea of being a black, very important, but also in the context, because it was a moment where saying like a Negro is an insult. They say, okay, yes, we have a value, we have a culture, but it's also the same guy who brought this idea of a cultural mulattoes. They say, anyone, we have a cultural mulattoes in the way of using. So, and I think that is also exist in a different uh, disciplines. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so, but there was the last part, I'm sorry, just like I said, that is about religion. He was asking, yes, in the novel, is it very clear, is about Islam, I mean, part of, part of Islam, and also Western education. And I asked the same question to, Samba, uh, to Sheikh uh, Amidukane. And I asked him, that is, I have that impression. So it's not Africa and, uh, and uh, Western uh, culture or education. And they look at me, like for a few minutes, they said, you know, we had Islam since 11th century in the dialogue. So it's not like something is like foreign to us, it's part of us, maybe. Uh, the question, like uh, the same question, maybe, uh, should I say, have the same, if you ask, uh, I'm sorry to bring that question, like for someone from Latin America saying, hey, uh, is it Spanish, um, the status of a Spanish, you know? I think after being colonized like for 500 years, I think there was a moment that people can embrace something and they turn it in their own way, you know? And, uh, something, whatever it came to you, through violence or any system, and you turn. So I think for people with dialogue, Islam is not uh, something for not to them, as I said, from 18. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you uh, so much. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the SG have mm -hmm. a question for before. Uh, I thought I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jiu. Uh, the SG, uh, Let's imagine that he's here. Yes. <laughs> so if he's here, let him say something. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Do you want to discourage me from coming back? <laughs> no, I think yes. I have nothing, nothing to add. <laughs> But I want to listen. Maybe I'll add something at the end. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Okay. He is asking a question. Um, so I, I wanted the, mm. sorry. I wanted my, the take, the take away from the book mm -hmm. for somebody who is reading it for the first time mm -hmm. and tie, trying to tie it with the author's intent. What was the author's intention? Was it a reactive book reacting to the realities? Was it uh, a novel to elucidate, was to uh, highlight or bring to light something? And then the third part of my question is, we can talk about a new book, new topic, new context. Yeah, but uh, whatever I'm saying, like Sheikh Amidoukan is not there, but uh, it remains kind of auto, his own experience. He went through that experience. Uh, he studied philosophy in Europe. So I think it's a kind of meditation, his own meditation about his own experience. 
and bringing it into a context. Season 61, then we have the moment Africa is becoming independent around that. So we're thinking about the issue of identity, and I'm interested on the issue of education, that's where identity, but looking at education. So uh, I think his own struggles, and uh, following the question of uh, Kulsi Lam asking about uh, other novels, yes, I think it was an issue for different intellectual, uh, different African intellectuals struggling to understand where they are going through, the type of education they are receiving, and the way they can respond to their own society. So uh, that is, uh, I would say, you know. But connected to our reality, I mean, uh, oh, I see, I think there's a lot. There's a lot we can do. Uh, we can take just like, for example, uh, BIE, any pillar in the sector, and see how it's connected to that. And for example, uh, theologism. You have to get, like, for example, to a solution that I would say or, or about education when they're discussing. And so, for example, that it is a community. They are sitting there discussing, listening, of course, to the leaders. What you should do, what we should do with our kids, what you should do, send them. So it's our education. What about our. And some element, maybe that is a very important the idea of death. Uh, there was a very interesting uh, proverb uh, from uh, Mexico uh, saying like, for example, saying like, they bury us, but they didn't know that we are seed. So, in that way, I think this idea of death, like the surveillance, if you want to bring new ideas, whatever, of course you are doing violence to the establishment, to, all, to the old order. Thank you, Jean-Pierre, mm. and thank you, Colsi. Of course, Mary, all of you, really, who contributed to the extraordinary presentation and for choosing mm -hmm. this, this book. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you've done a spectacular, spectacular job at, at setting the spirit of it. But I wanted to build a bit on yes. what Jim mm -hmm. asked, which is that I remember reading this book as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I know that I wouldn't be who I am without that book. And I agree with you, I reread it about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a completely different book. Mm -hmm. But with regards to what we do at the OSC, I can assure you that if it wasn't for L'Aventure Ambigu, I do not think that I would have started to think about the BIE principles of intraculturalism. In particular, intraculturalism. Dialecticism was there, of course, but intraculturalism, I think, was kick-started, in my mind, by to write a novel. The novel is no longer your author. You love the piece of your... I feel that at the end, it's within somebody else, is one of dichotomies. It's a condemnation of the either-or. Yes. Mm -hmm. no. Because there is no symbiosis, mm -hmm. right? And Mary read it spectacularly. Mm -hmm. We have to allow ourselves to die mm -hmm. and the foreigners to take the empty space we will have left. And I think that ultimately what you see with Sambadialo during, the, during the, the book, which might speak to many of us, in fact, I think, and that's what makes it an extraordinary novel. It is 1961, mm. still very relevant today in different forms, is that ultimately, he falls in love with French philosophy, Western mm -hmm. philosophy. And in Europe, he falls in love with a French lady, without spoiling the story. But in fact, this is a story you can't spoil. Mm. Because, no, no, really, because you can mention the facts but it's not the facts that are important. It's the dialogue in between. Mm -hmm. But you remember the scene where he goes, I read it many years ago, but mm -hmm. where he has dinner at, yes. the, at the house mm -hmm. of, of the parents mm -hmm. of, of this young lady he fell in love with in France. Mm -hmm. And he is a man that has mastered Western philosophy mm -hmm. far better than they have. And yet he comes out of there with the conclusion or at least the intuition, no matter how much I have replaced those that I have left back home with the foreigners, no matter how much I master 
their philosophy, no matter how much I believe mm -hmm. in their philosophy, I will never be one of them. Right? And of course, that's around the time in Rome, you will all have education systems that reflect our histories, our cultures, our identities. But our cultures are already mm -hmm. the result of diversity and mixing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in constant process of symbiosis, of absorptions of, of other elements. And so my question, I'm getting to a question. My question, again, I don't know from a spiritual sense, mm -hmm. at least in a sense of identity. Uh, but it's true that in that region of the world, Islam is more of the Sufi tradition, right? And there's this extraordinary Prince of the Birds. And in the Conference of the Birds, right? And the Hopo takes them through seven valleys. There's the valley of love, the valley of pain, the valley of detachment, and so on and so forth. And of course, at every valley, more and more birds leave, saying this is a senseless quest. The Samarha does not exist, or the Hopo is a liar. And eventually, when they arrive at the Hopos, uh, at the place of the Samar, there are only a handful of birds. And, the, and there is nothing there except a link. And the Hopo says, I know where the Samar resi resides. And the Samar resides within the link. So we must fly over and look. It reflects that Sufi conception that God to arrive to Al-Wusul which is the arrival. And the moment of arrival is a moment where you die, you disappear, your spiritual self dies, and you disappear inside of God. And what this means is because God is unity, there is no concept of good or evil, because that's binary. There is no concept of believer or non-believer, that's binary, because God is unity and only recognizes unity. So my question is, if you believe, and also with your conversation mm -hmm. with the author, that perhaps the death at the end is a almost Sufi embodiment of an attempt at reconciliation. The fixed is a kind of a movement, you know? Uh, the way you define your identity today is not like you'll be defining it like in 10 years to come. So. Maybe that is one, but recognizing and coming back to the beginning of the novel, saying like, for example, like we have to die. So not just from a religious perspective, but recognizing like even we have our culture today is not going to remain the way it is. So there will be something we may lose, but there will be the kind of changes and we have to be ready to accept. So uh, that is what uh, I may say uh, about that, yeah. And maybe just one thing to, I'm speaking about Islam in Senegal. There was also two uh, aspects maybe I should mention, but that is mostly from a sociological point of view. For people convert, for example, to Christianity, it's like you have to renounce to all your culture. For example, in Rwanda, there was a book when you, uh, they see that's a book, Prepare People to Be Baptized. Just recently, maybe five years ago, there was still one question asking the people, do you renounce to Riangombe, to the cult of Riangombe? So that's traditional aspect of that. And uh, people believe, like for example, in Islam, there are not too much you have to renounce from your cultural system. It's like, they will talk about prayer and the different aspects you have to adhere but uh, not to renounce to everything about yourself. And that's how uh, we should know. Uh, one of the writers is this African-American who got a uh, Nobel Prize. The name is not coming. They were asking her, oh, Marie Condé, they say, do you prefer to write in Creole or in France, in French? And she said, I prefer to write in Marie Condé. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I think that Dr. Rivet. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, well, I'd like to express mm -hmm. my appreciation, yes, yes. first of all. Uh, not just the content and the message, mm -hmm. but also the way you guys presented it. Yes, it was very impressive. It's kind of dramatized yes, and yes. performed in a well-performed mm -hmm. Uh, presentation uh, attached with film and you know dialogue conversation mm -hmm. so it's very impressive and I'd like to say thank you for that saying that <clears throat> yeah there's just one thing that struck me by the way I, I, I didn't read this book but I <laughs> I promised to myself mm -hmm. that I have to read this book as soon as possible so one thing uh, that surprised me is that how the character in the mm. book, uh, his outlook, culture, a uh, vision that can help us mm. to get out of where we are, in the case of Africa, mm. because that's the only way. And I was also wondering that he came back to his village from mm. France, and then he was, you know, kind of, again, suffering uh, that he cannot cope up with, to succeed his uh, father in the religion uh, aspect, to be a religious leader. And he thinks also he's not coming up with something important to contribute to his community. So that means he didn't see or grasp anything important from, from the Western you know, exposure he had from the, West, from the schools or universities and wherever he was and to transfer knowledge to his you know a traditional village and so so i see some maybe it's because i didn't read the book mm -hmm. but there are a number of gaps mm -hmm. in my mind how he reacted that way and how he felt that way because naturally you know coming to, you know in the conversation the, the positive aspect not just the gap and the, the difference between the two. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, food for thought. I, I had oh, Let me just quickly interject because I have to get going. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to clarify what I meant. Uh, well, I did not mean that, that he was binary. Mm -hmm. I think that he sought to be complex, but he was put in a situation in which it was either or. You could not choose. It's not that the world view of Sambadialo is reductionist. It is that everyone around is reducing everything to are you. You will never quite be Western no matter how much you, 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 you master Western philosophy. And when you go back, because he also goes to France quite young, right? And that is in the dialogue that was read out something that is said. The problem is not that he goes back not wanting to contribute anything, but many of the cultural aspects that were part and part to criticize it and change it. Yeah. But the moment, uh, that is what I meant. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, I'm sure Jean-Pierre will, yeah. will mm -hmm. It's not over yet. Mm. We, we still have a question. But you have other people, they don't know how to take a position. But the most rare lady, I think, is the one more pro I mean, progressive. Thing. And I think in the case of Osamba Diallo, uh, of course, is mostly trying to show some of the conflict people may go through. But it doesn't mean that you are not making like a choice. You may make that choice, but there is a conflict that's a going through. Okay. You may find a way. So I think those point of view they are represented, yeah. Especially through the thing. Yes, yeah. so, I think it's Adrien. Adrien's a question. He gave Adrien's a question. I was about to say. Sorry, yes, sir. Okay. First of all, it's very fortunate to come here. It's very nice uh, to be part of this, and I really appreciate everybody who participated on it. I just wanted to share an experience in Ethiopian context that. Uh, the, the same scenario happens mm -hmm. for us always, uh, like uh, two, two of it. The first is there has been a choice, for example, I myself haven't gone to the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I went to church school. Mm -hmm. And that church, ch by the time, like we went to church school, there has been a choice, like uh, missionary schools are there teaching the kindergarten uh, system. 
people used to have those options, like to go to the modern or not. But those church schools, for example, you know the Ethiopian alphabet is like 132. But we finished to read like in 90 days. We, we've already now reading. We start reading. And then uh, like we finish one sort of uh, saying it in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that it's like people struggle nowadays after finishing fourth grade. We, we already do it like in 90 days. And then we start reading and, and that's the binary things, they, it's always like, uh, and some people complaining about learning French. It's not the problem learning French. It's the problem is not learning our language. It's not bringing French or English the problem is that. That's, that's where the binary thing comes. And the second point I want to raise is about uh, coming back from foreign countries. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's always a big problem with people who are coming from like the diaspora or whatsoever coming back is uh, the, the first problem is that they're coming, they're coming back home with different balance. They are measuring everything with a different uh, standard. That's why they get confused. They don't understand. It's not they don't understand uh, what's happening here, but they are measuring it with a different uh, perspective with different, so that's why we, we, we have, we've been talking in the Your team for, Willie, really you have done a great job, very innovative. And uh, I think that one of the key aspects of this uh, novel is the, we can learn about the development of a consciousness process, the process to develop consciousness. And I think uh, for the global greater south, we need a, to develop a global consciousness of the greater south. And I think that will include a lot of ambiguities as well. And those uh, dichotomy, I think that will be part of the process as well. And uh, one of the key questions I have regarding uh, that, if uh, after your presentation, I really get a greater idea of you and your all your uh, skills and and congratulations for this for handling you personally after we okay, okay. I'm no, I don't agree with the author on this and that uh, just to reply to that my own experience if I can share quickly I started my first I mean my first degree was in literature and African uh, linguistics so when I was doing literature it was like don't talk about the author just don't talk about reality, like um, say what the text is saying. So it means like you're in conversation with the text. And then when I moved, then I started studying philosophy, was like, what do you think? What is your point? So you have to be engaged on that. So in the case of a novel, of course, as I said, I can talk about different, uh, uh, different uh, attitudes or perspectives of characters on that, yeah. And then the novel, gives us a different point of view, of course. If I want to understand like this character, what for that reason given by the author saying, we have a way like a Creole, we have a French insight. There was a moment you can't make that distinction. If a, a Rwandan uh, musician, uh, uh, she has the songs with a very soft melody, very beautiful. And I made an interview with her and I asked Cecile Kailenga, uh, I like the same thing about Islam in that case. But of course, there are some people who had the same question, like uh, Kusi Lamko and other. For example, same, uh, in Senegal, where you have like a 99% uh, help us to understand things, to analyze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question? Yeah. So, oh, I hope it's good enough. <laughs> okay, 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 sure. Well, I would echo everyone. This was amazing, just amazing. So, thank you so much for enriching our, our lives, our Friday afternoons, and giving us a lot to think about for the long term. So, I think I was really taken by, you know, the wonderful recitation that Mary did and the, the Most Royal Lady, her thought about how 
you know, she, I feel like there's some conflicting ideas in her speech because on one hand, she's seen education as a way, the thing that could allow the young people in their community to actually fight against the world that had imposed itself on them and the foreigners, I think she calls it, the outsiders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, the education was a way to arm them for a future. It was not the maybe the future or the way they hoped they would have liked to keep their children cozy and safe in their own culture. But because of this imposition, they were forced to put them into a system to, to arm them, basically. And on the other hand, she sees this as in a contrasting idea, in a way, as incompatible, that if they do that, then they have to take themselves out of the hearts of their children. So um, it reminded me, and I'm not the expert on this, but it reminded me of the story I've heard about Emperor Haile Selassie. And when the Italians came back, you know, we. Many of you may know the Battle of Adwa. They tried to colonize Ethiopia. As I've been told, Emperor Haile Selassie said, we need to have Western education. Uh, I was reflecting on the BIE and thinking about, you know, for me, I, I love the BIE. I think it's very idealistic, right? But I, I wonder about how we interact with our member states, for example. Many of them are talking about STEM. You know, STEM, we think about the Cold War, right? And we think about <laughs> these, this idea of education as a way to fight against those powers that can otherwise crush you. And people think about STEM in that sense. How do we have engineers? How do we have, you know, how do we build wealth? How do we build weapons? How do we build militaries? And how do we have AI that <laughs> we can protect ourselves? How can we have satellites so that they don't know everything about us? We have our own data sources. Um, and I wonder how BIE is in conversation with those types of interests within education. So mm -hmm. this is a, uh, maybe it goes a bit beyond the novel, mm -hmm. but it would be very interesting to mm -hmm. hear your reflections on that mm -hmm. as an educator and as a philosopher. Yeah, setting, Thank you so much. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, setting with um, uh, I mean, the lady, uh, it's interesting to put uh, a speech or point of view into a context. She's addressing people who are resisting to go to the new school. And she's using a kind of concession in a speech. We know that this type of education was, and also to understand the society that, I think I mentioned to you, uh, one of my brother in Raza, uh, a BA, not a master's a BA in biology, and is making $200,000 uh, per year. So you can have someone with a PhD or professor in the university, how much do you have? So we have a lot of things going on. So, the, but in our case, for example, we are talking about indigenous knowledge. So it's not just about engineering. It's not just about mathematics. It means we value. Yes, we have a type, but in even a type to say indigenous technology, we are talking about interdisciplinary research. So I think the way we are positioning ourselves, being very open to keep those, dis we need those, dis equipped with those disciplines to change the, to, for the, the third way of development. So, and we believe that uh, those countries will follow, you know. Mm. Okay, thank you uh, so much.